Welcome to AXA XL Arctic Live. We are here at the UK Arctic Research Station on the island of Svalbard. We are in fact in the in Neolosund, which is the northernmost permanent community in the world, an international science community up here. So it is an ex-mining village, uh, but now converted to science and there are 14 stations here, research stations here, uh, from 10 countries. And we are at the UK uh, Arctic Research Station, and this is our home for the next week or so, as we conduct science out in the very cold waters, um, as in the fjord just beside us. Today is a keeping warm live investigation and so we'll be looking at how you keep warm up here uh, but before we do that uh, we have uh, schools from the uk usa panama colombia canada and mexico watching hello to you all um, and some shout outs uh, to uh, mrs dempsey's third grade class from WB Simpson Elementary in Camden, Delaware. Hi to all the third grade class there. Um, and we also have Mrs. Parsons second grade students and they are from Elk Knob Elementary School in Lee County, Virginia. So a big Arctic hi to all the students um, at Elk Knob Elementary School. Great to have you with us. So we're looking at keeping warm. What we're going to do is a couple of things. We're going to go outside uh, to see how cold it is uh, and to talk a little bit about where we are and uh, how you work and survive in Arctic conditions. We'll come back in, look at a few bits of kit that we have, and then we'll do an investigation uh, looking at what kind of materials are the best insulators. Um, Towards the end of the call, of course, a chance for you to submit your questions. Uh, we'll be taking questions um, that have been submitted in advance via the Encounter EDU website. And then we'll be taking questions also from the live chat. So please do get them ready, post them through, and those will come to us um, later in the broadcast. Uh, but for now, we'll be having a look outside. So I'm just going to grab uh, my microphone. And also great, we've got Union Point Academy um, joined us again. So great uh, to have you with us. We'll find out how we get on with keeping warm in the Arctic. So guys, it's actually looking like a beautiful day up here. Um, so Ellie and I are going to pop outside. Take all our leads with us. No wireless in the Arctic because it interferes with the scientific equipment. But here we are, uh, ha has to be one of my favourite views in the world from the International Science Village in Neolosund, looking down the fjord, the Kongsfjorden, down towards the Kronobreen Glacier, the Kongsvegen Glacier, and then in the distance, uh, we can talk about the Trey Krona, uh, those pyramidal peaks that you can see. It has got a lot warmer, uh, so from sampling out on the boat um, out towards the end of the fjord you can see in the distance and the fjord is a sea inlet that runs past uh, the research stations here all the way down there about 15 kilometers 10 miles away um, it was very very chilly out on the water with the wind with wind chill about minus 25 degrees um, celsius and someone who can probably work out what that is in fahrenheit also, you can see running down and along the side of the fjord, uh, these amazing glaciers, the Leuvenbreen, um, coming down there uh, and have also in years gone by been researching on the glaciers up there, looking at the microbiology, so the bacteria um, and other tiny life forms that live um, in the ice and in the uh, exposed ground as the glaciers retreat so you can see maybe just the front of the glacier there um, a very fast glacier broken up crevassed and that snout that front of the glacier is where the icebergs are coming from in the fjord and that's about um, 30 meters 100 feet high so looks tiny wee from where we are um, but with such clear 
air up here in the Arctic, uh, you can uh, just almost sort of reach out and touch it, um, but it is 10-odd is, uh, miles away from where we are at the moment. And what's amazing about being up in the Olesund is you can see the great outdoors, the wild Arctic out um, beyond us, uh, but we have amazing facilities, and you can hear the sort of large plant vehicles um, behind us. Um, this is very much a sort of a working site. Um, so there are about 40 buildings, storerooms, uh, power station, um, sort of tractors and diggers to, to move snow around and to, to keep this community going. Um, and it really is, it, you know, you have to have everything with you up here to be able to survive. You can't just you know, call call in a, a tractor if there's a bit of a snow drift. Um, everything has to be up here already. Um, we have people driving past, working with the different um, sections of the community up here. Everything from the marine laboratory and the boats, the amazing boat captain and boat that we're using as a platform for our research. Um, everything all the way down to having here um, the UK Arctic Research Station. Uh, so what's amazing, we're not camping out um, in tents. Uh, we are here, each have a bedroom. These windows down here are our bedrooms. Come back from a cold day out in the field. We've got a, a, a snow digger uh, just going past in the background there. I'm going to clear out somewhere else. Uh, just so we can get around. Um, and then further back, we have uh, lab space, sitting room, offices, showers, all that kind of thing. And we're actually based in the storeroom garage of the UK Arctic Research Station. The, if you come in uh, and if you can turn around, you see the boats and sleds and all that um, kind of thing uh, in here. Everything you need to, to explore and research in the Arctic. Uh, and just as I come in, try not to close the door on all the leads, because that would be the end of this broadcast. Um, so I just move those out of the way with my foot. Bring that round. Even though it's only about minus four today Celsius, um, really, really great to be here. And, and also what's um, amazing is that we've got uh, some of the kit that we might use. And, and my hat, um, very warm hat, the warmest hat I've ever had. So we'll quickly just put that on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I won't be able to hear anything under here. Uh, but here, what have we got here? We've got, um, in fact, we've got a skidoo suit. Um, so snowmobile. So if you're out on a snowmobile, it gets really chilly on the back there. So wearing a really nice puffy suit to go out in that. This one in an incredibly stylish yellow. Um, so you look like a banana um, riding across the uh, the Arctic, going out to somewhere like the Leuven Breen, the glacier that we looked at before to do some research out there. Going out in an open boat, um, you might be wearing an immersion suit in case you fell overboard or slipped or anything. And all sealed up all the way down to the boots at the bottom here. Um, so a couple of examples of, of travel kit um, that might be used uh, going out um, into, the, into the Arctic wilderness. Uh, what else have we got? Well, I'm wearing um, not too warm clothes, but the important thing here is the insulation, this nice insulated jacket um, with, the, with padding on the inside, good thick woolly pulley, and then a base layer underneath. So lots of nice insulation. If I was going out, I'd be wearing much warmer footwear. Don't look at my feet at the moment. It's pretty well socks as I'm padding around base. Uh, don't want to bring any snow inside. And then some of the most important stuff, and I'll sit down in a moment uh, to look at keeping fingers warm. And especially when you're doing science and when you're doing camera work, um, fingers are the things that go because you're often doing quite fiddly jobs um, using a camera, film equipment, electronics um, or doing sampling, undoing nets, undoing screws, undoing catches and uh, the warmest gloves you simply can't do that fine work with. So we end up having what we call glove systems. I'm going to sit down and show you some glove systems down here. Put the microphone back. 
take this hat off before I overheat. I can actually hear what's going on. Lovely muffled in there. So uh, the first first thing we might have um, is you might have a thin liner glove, and this means even if you take your thick glove off, you've still got something thin on the inside uh, to keep your hands warm and so you're not touching metal directly. On top of that, um, this is actually a, a lined glove already. If I can just about hold the camera and, and use some of the larger buttons uh, with something this size. Um, so that's not too bad uh, at all. Uh, but if you're going for quite a cold journey, take those two off. Um, take that one off anyway. We'll show you the nice big mitts. There you go. Hopefully, I think that's probably the biggest, well, certainly the biggest glove I've ever seen. Maybe the biggest glove you've ever seen. Nice big bare paw mitt here. And it's got fur, this fake fur, um, on the back. Um, and that is not just for decoration, that plays a very important role. Um, if you start to get um, your nose or your cheek freezing, um, frost nip, so it feels a bit like sort of candle wax or sort of slightly defrosted chicken, um, you can start to blow onto the glove and keep that warm air next to your cheek or nose and start to defrost um, your face. Um, that is if you don't have someone who's willing to, to rub your um, frozen uh, face and defrost um, that for you. So that's what the, the, um, the fur on the back of the gloves um, is for. So there's a few bits of kit um, around and about that we have to make uh, travel and work in the Arctic just a little bit more pleasant. And so what we're doing today is we're investigating the types of materials that are, are good at insulating, uh, that are good to keep your, your warmth in. Now, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take three containers. We've got these screw top containers so that that keeps the sample in there. We're going to fill these with some warm water, hot water. Uh, if you are doing this at school, uh, the recommended max temperature for water used in school science experiments is 43 degrees uh, Celsius um, and that will prevent scalding if there are any spills. Um, teachers are of course um, welcome to, to think about how they do it if they're just demonstrating it at the front of the class. Um, but we do recommend 43 degrees max um, just in case there is a spill of any kind. Um, then we're going to put some hot water in these. We're going to wrap them um, in some materials and see which is the best insulator. Now we're going to look at a couple of things. We are going to think about fair testing. And a fair test means that we are testing just the thing that we want to investigate. And in this case, we want to investigate how good a material is for insulating. So we're using the same size um, container for each of our samples. And we're going to also use the same amount of water and the same temperature and then leave them outside for the same amount of time. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm just going to stand up and start to pour water in. That's OK. And just so we get the camera on, on the containers. It's very squeaky thermos. Okay, so this one here. Somewhere there are measuring marks along the side of these pots, but it is very, very tricky to see in this light. So I'm going to have to look and reckon on this. And they might need your help from a distance to see how I'm getting on. Pretty good. 
It's like making sure everybody gets the same amount of tea, really, isn't it? So put that to one side. I'm going to measure the temperature because I'm measuring change. I'm going to measure the temperature to start off with. And this is um, 82.3 Celsius, which is 180 Fahrenheit. 180 Fahrenheit, 180 Fahrenheit, 180 Fahrenheit we have here, put the lids on and then we have chosen some different materials to put on to insulate them. I'm going to look at some bubble wrap, I have this wonderful little bubble wrap contraption here and we'll put some bubble wrap on top of here. And we're just using uh, some tape to seal all this in. Uh, I then have some towel. A nice little towel container. Towel hat almost uh, for this second experiment. So put a little towel hat on there. And for the last one, we're just going to put the biggest glove ever in the world. And we're going to put these outside for uh, about 10 minutes or 10 minutes exactly will time on the computer here. And what we're thinking about is which of these is going to be the best insulator. So you're, hopefully you're doing this um, in your classroom and choosing three different materials that you have around and about and thinking how those are going to insulate which of those is going to be the best insulator? What can we predict? So your ideas, please, either on your own uh, materials or on the ones we've chosen here. So we have the bubble wrap, we have the towel, and we have the biggest glove in the world. I'm just going to put those outside for 10 minutes, and then we'll bring them back in 10 minutes' time and see how they're going on. I'm going to leave the... Oh, no, you tripped over the mic there. I'll leave the mic here, so I'll try and shout from the outside so you can still hear me. I've got my hands full of, of hot samples. Here we go. A hundred. And lay them very carefully. We had a bit of an issue this morning when we were doing this. And some of them blew over. So I'm very conscious that none of the samples should blow over. So take the last one out here it was the glove that blew over so Cross fingers, that all works, and that we don't have anything falling over. And at 29 past, we'll go and have a look uh, to see how those are getting on. Uh, and so we're just thinking about which of those are going to be the best insulator. And uh, if you don't have the Arctic outside your classroom door, you can always use a refrigerator icebox just to um, add that extra chill. It's quite a warm day today, um, so um, just around freezing, just below freezing. And so who knows um, what those temperatures will go down to from 180 Fahrenheit, um, just over 80 degrees Celsius. So we'll see how that's getting on. While that's happening, would love to know how you're getting on with selecting your different materials, what you've chosen, your predictions um, for uh, which one of these is going to be the best insulator, and then any questions that you might have uh, for us about life and science in the Arctic and how we stay warm. So um, really great to have students um, from 
you look wonderful. I wonder what the students at WB Simpson Elementary, um, Elk Knob Elementary and Union Point Academy. Uh, Union Point think the glove will be the best insulator. Um, and it would be great to think that's a great prediction and then think why that might be the case. What is it about the glove uh, that makes it better than a towel or bubble wrap? Would you go to the North Pole wearing a bubble wrap suit, a towel suit, or a fake leopard fur suit? These are, this, this is the question that we are asking on today's Arctic Live. So thinking about insulation. Um, we've got a question here from Union Point Academy asking, is the station open year round? Now, the UK station is not open year round. It, it opens for projects. So projects will book in and say, we would like to have the support of the UK station. Uh, we're coming up between such and such a date uh, and then it opens for that project. So I have been here between you know some projects in March, some in late April, and some in May, as we are now. Other stations up here in the Ollisund are open all year round. Uh, so the Norwegian Polar Institute, um, so the Norwegian station, and also um, the Alfred Wegener Institute, I know also has um, a year round team here, and that's, that's a German research institute with a station up here. Um, and from Elk Knob Elementary, um, how many layers of clothing do you have to wear each day? I think that uh, it really depends on, on the weather. So today is nice and warm, um, just below freezing. Um, so high 20s or mid 20s Fahrenheit. Um, so nice and warm. So there's three, three layers on the top, two layers on the bottom. Um, and um, then just one pair of socks and boots. Uh, if it's so the coldest I've been down to is minus 40, minus 40, minus 45, and that's about sort of minus 40, minus 50 Fahrenheit. In that kind of temperature, you'll be wearing upwards of, of 20, 30 items of clothing. So you'll be wearing a hat, a neck warmer, um, a face mask, um, neoprene face mask, keep your face warm, goggles, try to make sure there's no gap for the snow or cold to get in. Um, then on your top, uh, base layer, mid layer, fleece, um, normal jacket, um, sort of insulated jacket, and then a big, if it's really cold, a big, um, down jacket, so that's five plus one, two, three, four, nine items of clothing so far. Maybe a balaclava extra to help. That would be ten items of clothing. On each hand, you are then wearing uh, inner glove, medium glove, and then mitt. Um, so that's another three on each hand, so that's six, sixteen. Uh, on your trousers, on your bottom, you've got underwear, thermal lining, uh, fleece trousers over trousers so that we're up to 20 and then on your feet um, three pairs of socks so inner socks warm socks vapor barrier liner socks <laughs> to stop um, sweaty feet um, uh, the moisture from sweaty feet sort of freezing uh, around your feet um, and then we will um, have a big pair of boots that's eight um, four on each foot and so that is 20, 28, if I counted right, Ellie, 28 items of clothing. It takes a long time to get dressed. Um, you know, you you think, you know, the whole thing is, oh, let's go outside for a quick walk. And then you sort of like f 10 minutes later, as you find all your clothes, put all your clothes on, you're sort of incredibly hot if you're inside a warm tent and then you're going outside um, out into the Ulu. Um, so uh, lots of clothes, it really depends on what you're doing. Um, and, and often, you know, it changes during the day as well. So this morning was, was pretty nippy, um, probably minus 15 with the wind, um, which is, I'm going to have to get better at my translations, um, which is 20, um, ooh, 17 Fahrenheit or something. 
um, so about 17 Fahrenheit uh, this morning, um, or even lower than that. Um, and uh, yeah, so it depends on what, what it's like outside. Um, here we have the students at WB Simpson um, will think that the glove is best to, will be best to. So we'll see in about four minutes time how everything is getting on. Um, and really think about, you know, great predictions, but can you give a reason for your prediction? Can you think of anything from your previous knowledge or what you've observed in the natural world about why the glove uh, might be better? And that's what we're really trying to do today is look at not just how you stay warm in the Arctic, but how you can conduct a fair test. So as many things are the same um, as possible. So we're just looking at the material. And also when we make predictions, we, uh, that we try and think about reasons why we're making predictions. Why do we think such and such is going to happen? Why do we think the glove is going to be the warmest um, or, or with the best insulator uh, and keep the water the warmest. Now, we also see keeping warm uh, in the natural world. So when we look at some of the animals uh, that live up in the Arctic, we can see that um, we have uh, both the um, uh, different types of insulation. So we have uh, keeping warm with fur. So if we look at the polar bear, um, a lot of fur on the polar bear, and in fact, hollow fur. So trapping lots of air next to the body. So maybe that gives you a clue. Um, the other type of insulation you might find in the polar regions is the, um, what we have is a blubber and a great activity blubber gloves. We are short of margarine and butter in the Arctic at the moment. So we are not demonstrating blubber gloves um, at, <laughs> at the moment because uh, we can't really spare that um, from from the um, kitchens at the moment otherwise it would be great to show you blubber gloves up here um, in the Arctic. Uh, so blubber fat another great insulating uh, substance maybe next year we'll be able to put a blubber glove um, over one of the jars of hot water and see how that might cool down. Uh, so both um, um, humans and animals adapt in different ways. So humans really adapting by using different types of equipment and clothing um, to stay warm uh, and animals adapting through other means such as having fur and blubber to keep warm as well. So um, with Union Point Academy to sent through a great question is what kind of heat is used to heat the station? Um, it's from a generator, so it's a fossil fuel power generator um, power station just beyond the station um, out here. We have looked, um, you know, the Nielsen community has looked at having uh, both solar power uh, and wind power. The problem with solar power um, is that it is often very dark, <laughs> so pretty well um, from sort of September, October through to March. Um, it is dark here and then you do get light in the summer. So we're in a period of 24 hours sunlight at the moment all the way through um, to late August, September. Um, but otherwise pretty, pretty dark. So solar power, not great. And also often very still. So, um, you know, wind, wind power, also not great or storm coming through and that damaging the wind turbines. So unfortunately not as reliable. A source of energy as it could be up here but definitely looking at different ways we've been speaking a lot about offsetting our carbon uh, from this trip um, we've flown up here as a team of five of us uh, and also we are using fossil fuel energy while we're here um, and we have um, planted a grove of trees to help um, regenerate the primary old primary forest old growth forest in Scotland as part of this trip and we'll be posting how uh, you can join that um, endeavour as well um, by planting trees to, to regrow the old forest either in Scotland with us or where you are um, in, in Virginia, um, Delaware or elsewhere. Um, so 
Um, we think a WB symptom this is. We think it is the glove. <gasps> it's half past. We'll, we're going to find out whether it's the glove. Ellie, we're going outside again to get our samples. To get our... Is that okay? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I wonder if anyone's got the hint from the polar bear and the air and the fur. One coming in. I'm going to stand up for this piece and we'll take our coats off, our towel coat, our bubble wrap coat, and our leopard fur coat. There we go. And all at the same time. So we are starting at 180 degrees. First off is the glove, and that is someone write this down on the live chat. 135 Fahrenheit. Oh, dropping a bit, dropping pretty quickly. Went all the way up, and is now stabilizing around 128 degrees Fahrenheit. The bubble wrap is at one hundred and also one hundred and twenty eight Fahrenheit. I'm just going to test this again. This is very so the glove is 127 Fahrenheit. The bubble wrap this is the wonkiest thermometer in the world is 132 127, 132 and the towel is a hundred and thirty three uh, so the towel worked best then the bubble wrap and then the glove so reasons for this being um, one of the reasons we can have is that the um, what we had with the um, glove is it was first in the wind uh, and so we could have had a wind chill effect and that was sheltering the other two um, samples and that's still 132 that is still that's 129 and this is a hundred and twenty seven other reasons that we can have the different amounts of water in each of them but what I'm suspecting here is that um, the towel was the best, um, which and what we're looking at is in fact trapping lots of different layers of air. Could we actually look at the towel? Um, lots of nice layers here which we can trap air in. So what we're looking at is that air is an incredibly effective insulator. Uh, and but you don't want it to blow away so we've got the <laughs> blowing away all that nice warm air as the insulator with the glove um, and then the sheltered towel is the next best and then we have the bubble wrap also got air but also got very thin plastic there um, as well is the third best I wonder how you got on I don't think I'm going to wear a towel suit out uh, anytime soon um, because it won't be that sheltered 
Um, but really interesting to see that our prediction is that the glove, I thought the glove would be best as well because of that wonderful thick insulating. But in fact, interestingly, it's when we put that tight closed um, materials around the plastics that are the best. So what I can learn from that, do your sip up on your jacket, make sure you don't have any drafts going through you because it's probably the wind that is gonna really get you. Uh, even with the warmest clothing, um, the wind is a big issue. So we have had um, weather where it has been an ambient temperature of just minus 13, but with a wind chill has taken it down to minus 50 something, that's in Celsius. Um, so it can really make a dramatic, dramatic difference. Um, here we have Elk Knob Elementary. I think the fleece wool and bubble wrap will keep our water warmer because fleece, because it's thick and soft, bubble wrap is extra thick and lots of coats are made of wool. So great to observe what's happening. Um, it's also interesting that these different materials the, with the fibers trapping air um, next to the body um, are often the best. Um, King's College Panama. Um, welcome, King's College Panama. Um, asking, are there any negatives due to animals having thick fur or lots of blubber. Um, really um, not if you're in a cold place and so that if you have thick fur or lots of blubber it is probably because you have adapted to being in a cold environment and that helps you insulate your body and keep you nice and toasty. If we had rapid warming we might see that as a dis disadvantage for those species because it'd be adapted to somewhere which is cold and then that environment changes. Normally these environmental changes happen over many, many, many centuries and so there is a slow adaptation within the population um, at large and that um, looking at that as a driver for evolution, environmental change um, and adaptation within populations over many generations. Uh, but that is a whole nother <laughs> discussion on um, environmental change and evolution. Um, so uh, I find this fascinating that every time you, you do these um, tests, there are other factors involved. And we try and have a fair test because we are looking just to look at whether, which material um, is best. Earlier today, we stood them all up in a line so that they all exposed to the wind in an equal way. And then we had one of the um, the, the samples, the, the glove sample blowing over. We tried to avoid that and put the um, the glove um, into the wind and, and sort of almost sort of sheltering the other two behind it. And that has um, probably made a difference to how this has changed this afternoon. So really interesting. And it'd be great to see um, what kind of results that you get from the tests that you're doing back in the classroom when you have easier conditions where you are putting them maybe in an ice box or, or a refrigerator um, and having something a bit more stable than putting it outside up here in the Arctic. Um, so it's it's um, one of the most important things is, is, is keeping warm because it, it can affect not just, you know, feeling cold and but also the emotional state of the team. Uh, so it's incredibly important so to have that clothing, to have cups of tea, to have um, biscuits. Biscuits are great for fuel, nice high energy kick um, to keep that fuel inside um, going and burning those calories to keep you warm. It is amazing how quickly your metabolism can change. So the, the speed at which your body works, um, eating a chocolate bar, and instead of piling on the pounds, uh, you are um, really burning through that. It's almost like putting sort of gas in, the, in, the, in, the, in a tank in a car. You really feel that ability um, to generate more warmth. Um, a favorite snack up here um, has turned out to be peanut M&Ms um, with that sugar, sugar, chocolate and fat from the nuts and really highly effective um, in giving an energy boost in cold weather. So it's been amazing um, having you as part of this live investigation, hopefully take away some points, both in terms of what it's like to work in the Arctic and also um, improving your working scientifically skills. Obviously, I need some help on that. 
and to make sure I do, make sure that as many conditions are the same so that it's a fair test. Um, Elk Knob Elementary asking how do blubber gloves work? Um, the, the the link um, I'm sure we'll get the link up to um, the activity online um, on the live chat. Um, but essentially, what you're doing is you're looking at um, how effective is fat is blubber as an insulator. So you make a, a two plastic gloves or rubber gloves, and you put a layer of margarine um, between them both, and then put your one hand uh, covered with a blubber glove into ice, and one hand covered just in a normal glove into a bucket of ice water or into a snowdrift if, if you happen to have one outside and then see how it feels differently on two hands and see how long you can keep your hands in, in, in the cold um, before before it gets too much. Uh, much like um, our brave scientists who are currently out on the fjord um, battling with the wind and the freezing uh, seawater to get the samples needed to understand our changing planet. Um, this morning, and this afternoon, hearing again from Nick Cox this morning, describing um, 